And good morning, everybody. Welcome to Casual Coffee with Ken, with a special Ken in the ki Ken in the Kitchen episode. You can tell I haven't had my coffee yet. I have. I haven't had enough coffee yet. It's Wednesday. How the heck did that happen already? Okay, so um, yes, today, today I'm going to be attempting coffee cake. And uh, it's a recipe from allrecipes.com. And of course, after the show, I'll go ahead and link to that. Karina has done this before, and she's made a couple of modifications. And I will also include what those are uh, in the description down below after the episode, as well as while I'm going through all of this uh, as I do it. So I hope everybody had a great weekend. For uh, some people, they had a long weekend. They you know, uh, got to kind of relax a little bit. Uh, for other people, with the quarantine and everything, it's been pretty much a non-stop weekend, and days of the week have ceased to really matter. Uh, I do have a day job, so I was appreciative of having the extra day, but even three days uh, starts to, to feel a little weird. Uh, and... Uh, <laughs> Oh, my friend Sean says, coffee cake, give me. Yeah, uh, I'm excited, actually, about this coffee cake. I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be good. So, good morning to Sean, and good morning, Hodgepodge. Hope you're doing well. Hope you're do both doing good. You had good weekends. Hope everybody is doing okay. I know this is a stressful time right now with uh, the state of all things being what they are. A lot of tension in some parts of the country, but uh, I hope you're taking care of yourself and that you're doing uh, that you're doing okay. You're keeping yourself occupied, and you're remembering to just kind of as much as possible right now, just to be in the moment and enjoy life one moment at a time. Because really, I mean, it's pretty much all we have anyway, right? So. I appreciate you spending time with me today. Let's go ahead and uh, let's let's kind of start, uh, just kind of dive right on in. Um, do me a favor. I'm kind of trying something a little different with my microphone today. I know there's been some audio problems in the past, so if you start to notice anything weird, like the sound starts to sound muffled or, or whatever, just kind of let me know in the comments because I do see those. And, uh, and I can make adjustments accordingly, but I think I've got that dialed in now. So, all right. First of all, let's kind of take a look at what we've got here. So, um, yeah, there, this is a little more elaborate than some of the other things I have attempted on the show before. As you can see, you've got the food processor out, as well as the big orange bowl. Uh, so yeah, it's it's going to be interesting, and uh, as is my uh, my method on this show, I'm I'm doing everything uh, as far as the measuring and stuff in real time, so you can see just how badly I mess it up. So let's go ahead and move over here, and we will uh, go ahead and start kind of going through this recipe. And all things considered, it's not really a uh, really difficult recipe, I say now. Uh, <laughs> we'll see how I feel about that later. Okay, I'm going to move some stuff out of the way here, because first I need some flour. And how much flour exactly do I need? One and a half cups of all-purpose flour. So, just about time for some more flour here. Oh man, let's see if I can get a full cup on here. Because you're supposed to do the scoop and sweep, right? I think is the way they do it on like Food Network. Uh, it might be a little short, but it's one and a half 
cup, so I'll make it up in the next cup. So then this just goes into the work bowl of the food processor. And then we'll do half a cup here. Be curious to know if any of you have made coffee cake before. Because it is very tasty. Just kind of set this aside here. Okay, so we've got flour and now we need one and a half teaspoons of baking powder. So, okay, got my baking powder here. So one and a half teaspoons. That's a tablespoon. It helps if you have all of your measuring spoons out, Mr. Ken. All right, one and a half. Yeah, this has been an adventure, I will say. Uh, I'm really enjoying learning more about baking. I've always been interested and it always appeals to me, baking does, more than cooking sometimes because it's very exact. There's not a lot of, it's not vague. And I, I feel that some recipes when you're just cooking are kind of vague. You get to eyeball things and I don't know, I, I like it to be more exact. All right, so now we need three quarters of a cup of white sugar. Okay, so I know I've got a quarter measuring cup around here. Somewhere here it is. Okay. So, one. And here we go. Two, three, three. Okay, so we've got three cups, three quarter cups, not three cups. Wow, three cups of sugar. <laughs> that would be awful. Uh, okay, three quarter cup white sugar, half a teaspoon of salt. Okay, so let's go ahead. I shouldn't measure it out over the work bowl, should I? That would be bad just in case I uh, end up messing this up. Okay, into the bowl. And then we've got a third a cup Shortening. Okay, that's I think. Huh. All right, I'm looking at my recipe here and I am finding that I'm missing an ingredient on here somewhere. This is uh, what happens when you do things live and then suddenly you realize, oh wait, I'm short something. So I need to take a look at something here real quick. Sorry about this. I know this is not uh, good TV here. But I have too many versions of this recipe, as it turns out. Yep, here we go. Okay, let's try this again. Go back over here. And now, okay, so I need 65 grams of 
shortening. Now, this is where one of the bigger differences is between Karina's recipe and my recipe. I'm sorry, Karina's recipe and allrecipes.com is that uh, we use the Crisco butter flavored shortening and it's it's good stuff I like it I guess since this one is intact I could have now nah, just weigh it weighing things for me is much easier uh, so zero that out and we're gonna go for 65 grams of the shortening. Let's see how good I can be at this here. Okay, ready? Here we go. Nope, that's only 50. <laughs> Paul Hollywood, I am not. That's 61 grams, getting closer. And Yay, 65. Okay, now, now we're good. Now we're cooking with gas, so to speak. All right. Love it. All right, so I've got, got that. I've got my half cup of milk I already poured. And then we have one egg and then half a teaspoon of vanilla extract. So what we're going to end up doing is in the rest of this in here, we've got the flour. I already put the baking powder, sugar, and salt in there. And now we're going to slowly add shortening. Okay, so wish me luck. <laughs> uh, this shortening was cold when I pulled it out of the freezer earlier, but now it's warmed up, so we'll see if this uh, goes. So just gonna pulse a couple of times to get everything to come together a little bit there. And then we'll just start dropping in. No, Ken, you have to take <laughs> the feed tube out. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Duh. And I guess what we're shooting for here is for everything to come together and be kind of pea-sized in the bowl. Get in there. Yeah, this is definitely warmer than, than I meant it to be. That's okay. This is how we learn. I don't know, if you've never used butter flavored shortening, I'd recommend it. I would definitely give it a try because it's uh, it's good. And for some reason, I think things, uh, generally speaking, come out better so far in my limited, very limited experience using shortening instead of just butter. Just put the last bit in there and let that run for a second and try to get everything to combine. Oh, it's getting there. I don't know if you can see, but it's starting to come together to where it uh, looks like kind of pea-sized bits maybe. All right, 
I don't want to over mix it too. That's the other thing I guess you have to worry about. So take the lid off here. And let's see, can you see that? It looks like it's mostly come together here. I'm gonna take out the blade. Put that aside there. I think this is pretty much okay. There's not any big chunks of shortening that I can see here, which uh, is what Karina warned me to be on the lookout for. So this looks pretty good. I'm gonna just go ahead and set that aside for now. And now we're going to need to get the egg. I think we're done with the scale too for now. Get the egg and stuff and more flour and such for the uh, crumble, because you've got to have crumble on top of coffee cake. It's a law. So we're going to need the milk. Oh, got to beat the egg first. That, okay, this isn't actually for the crumble, duh, Ken. Um, this is still for the actual coffee cake. So we're going to get the egg in here. Uh, there we go. And then I'm supposed to just kind of beat that up real well. is easy enough to do. I don't know if you can see that. But here we go. Yeah, I think the first time I ever had coffee cake was as a kid, and quite honestly, it was probably the Hostess coffee cake snack patch, you know, the ones that come in threes. And I, I'll still eat those. I mean, you put those in front of me, I'm going to eat them because they're delicious. But obviously they're not as good as something like this. Okay, so there's the egg beaten up a bit. And then uh, need to stir in the milk. So there goes the milk. And, and then you need vanilla, and uh, that's going to be, let's see here, come on vanilla, half teaspoon of vanilla extract, and for this we're using, come on, yeah, angles. Uh, vanilla paste, but you can use obviously just regular vanilla extract. Karina suggested I give the paste a try. She says it's a little easier to measure. So, half a teaspoon. All right, where'd my teaspoon go? Half teaspoon. There we are. And we'll just. Uh, and pour this in. Oh, that is easy, isn't it? That's uh, nice and thick, so yeah, nice. Get that in there. This smells really good, too. Regular vanilla extract doesn't usually smell very good, but this stuff actually does. Okay. I am so slow in the kitchen, it's really bad. Uh, let's see here, so we've got that. Got the milk in there. And now I guess we just have to 
Stir it until just blended, she says. Okay, stir until just blended. And then we have to, oh, she meant with this, because now I have to add this in there. Okay, that makes more sense. Okay, so here we go. And all of this is going in to the bowl. Oh, this, this looks neat. <laughs> I like the look of doughs. So this isn't actually a dough. Is, is this a dough? I don't think this, does this qualify as a dough? Because I don't know. Because I'm new. Whatever this is, I like the look of it. Okay. So put that over here. And now this is what we're supposed to stir together just enough to combine. Because otherwise, there is flour in here, and I guess you will end up with chewy coffee cake. And we don't want chewy coffee cake. Nobody wants chewy coffee cake. Now that I think about it, you know what would be interesting? I wonder why no one... And at least I don't think. I wonder why no one has come up with coffee cake flavored gum. I mean, they've got chocolate gum. They've got watermelon gum, which is my favorite. They have all sorts of flavors of gum, but they don't... I've never seen coffee cake flavored gum. There's got to be a way to do that and make it, uh, make it yummy, right? I would think so. Okay, so that's pretty much combined without, I think, uh, over-mixing. So I'm going to set this to the side now because now, now, we are at the point where I can make the crumble. So put that here. So a small bowl with fork mixed together, half a cup of brown sugar pack. We've used both uh, dark brown sugar and light brown sugar for this. And honestly, we just, uh, it doesn't really seem to make a difference, honestly. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, in this one, we're just using the, the light brown sugar. Just had to wipe the flour out of there real quick. Something else we've noticed is that uh, when you're using brown sugar, if you get the stuff that's in the bag instead of the box, it really does seem to stay softer. It does not dry out and become a brick. Which obviously you can still use it if it does, but it takes some work working around to, to actually do that when you're working when you're working with a brick of brown sugar. So, okay, and now, so half a cup brown sugar packed two tablespoons of flour. So here comes the flour again. I was wrong. We weren't weren't ready for that to go away. Okay, two tablespoons of flour. So here's the uh, tablespoon. And again, so one tablespoon, and then there's the second one. Two tablespoons. Get in there.
and then one teaspoon of roasted cinnamon. One teaspoon of roasted cinnamon, okay. And it doesn't have to be roasted cinnamon. We like the uh, McCormick's roasted cinnamon. Uh, we definitely have noticed a, a difference in the flavor. If you like cinnamon, try it. I think you will, you will be pleased with the flavor on this. And now, <laughs> Ken, you're going to need to add two tablespoons of melted butter. And that actually works out to twenty-eight grams of melted butter. So I also need to weigh out the butter and melt it, which doesn't take long. It doesn't have to be softened, it needs to be melted. That, that usually goes much quicker than trying to soften butter. So zero that out, and now we're going to go for 28 grams. Let's see what we can do here. Because I have not been great at guessing the measurements. Okay, here we go. <laughs> nope, 19. Oh, 27. You know what? I'm going to call that. That's close enough. 27. And uh, again, you can use any butter. We typically buy the uh, Plugra butter. It is a uh, higher fat content butter. And as such, tastes more buttery. So again, something, uh, it's, it's not cheap, but you don't have to, uh, to bake every week and, uh, it might be worth a shot. Just give it a try sometime. Okay. So now I just have to can go ahead and melt this. It's going to take a few seconds here, so don't go anywhere. I really appreciate your guys' patience. I know I am a slow poke in the kitchen. Karina just knocks this stuff out because oh, she's been doing it a lot longer than I have. She, she bakes very well and has baked ever since I've met her. We'll do 30, <coughs> 30 seconds, see how that goes. Mm, baking. This is fun. I like this. Thanks for being here. I, I really am having a good time doing this. Let's see how that looks. Uh, almost a little bit longer. Ah. <sighs> I think, I think now it's probably good, yeah. Good thing I remembered to uh, cover this with plastic wrap, so. There we go, now I can add the melted butter to this. And now we just Mix to combine, all right? I think that's all we have to do here. Yep, just mix with a fork until it's all combined together. And of course, if you have any leftover crumble, you shouldn't let it go to waste. I mean, so many things you could do with it. You could add it to your oatmeal, right? Because why not? 
why would you not add a brown sugar crumble topping to your oatmeal or your cornflakes or you know just put it in a bowl and eat it with a spoon because <laughs> because it's freaking crumble topping come on who doesn't want to do that crumble topping is the best okay that looks like it's well mixed to me move this out of the way we are done with the sugar and the salt now so those can both go up here This gets moved here. My little non-professional kitchen. I'm trying to make room here. Okay, so now this is, I think, the other deviation. Oh no, this isn't a deviation. This is part of the recipe. For a second, I thought maybe Karina did this on her own, but no, this is how it works. So I'm going to dish these into a lubed muffin you know, cupcake pan and use the biggest disher, I guess they call it, that you have. And you just scoop it and dish it into things. You don't want to fill up your disher all the way. Uh, you're looking for, I guess, according to the recipe, anywhere from half to three quarters full in each cup. It's supposed to make nine of these. This is a really sticky dough, really sticky. Um, you could try uh, oiling your uh, disher, but I find that it doesn't really make much of a difference after the first couple. These have all been sprayed liberally with Pam. And our disher, I think, is broken. The spring action doesn't actually spring anymore. <laughs> you know, the little thing. I think it's supposed to be springy. Or maybe not. I don't know. Because I am new in the kitchen and uh, haven't done this a lot. I mean, when I was a kid, these were just considered to be ice cream scoops. That's what they were used for at my house. But now everybody has those really fancy uh, ice cream scoops that look funny and they have the special handle, you know, the one where it warms up to your touch and that's what helps get the ice cream out. I actually like those, but they I don't remember those existing when I was a kid. Okay, so... I have a feeling I didn't fill all of these up uniformly, but that definitely looks okay. So we'll move this out of the way. And now, now we've got to put the crumble on. Yay, crumble. And so you can just take a spoon or the fork. I'm actually gonna use a little spoon here. And don't be afraid of the crumble. Just kind of press it in there. Because this is one of the best parts of any coffee cake recipe, right? We love this particular recipe because it uh, it's almost like portion control, although who are you? Who are you kidding? You're not going to eat just one. Uh, but if you wanted to try to be good, quote unquote, about it, it's hypothetically easier, probably, to not go hog wild on your coffee cake if it's uh, 
in individual servings like this versus, you know, an actual coffee cake, but you would probably be tempted to serve yourself larger slices of because it's coffee cake. But again, who are we kidding? We know we're not going to eat just one of these. Uh, I wish you could smell this crumble. I love the smell of brown sugar. I really do. Yeah, I can tell right away some of these are going to puff up a lot. This one is much, uh, isn't quite as filled with batter, with dough, as the others. That's okay. That is okay. We are good with that. So now, what we're going to do is you're going to put these in an oven uh, that is preheated. Come on, Ken. to 425 degrees. Now, our oven runs hot, so ours is just set for 400 degrees because it really does run hot, but if your oven is accurately calibrated, then you're going to want to shoot for 425. Let's get those in there, and then we're going to set the timer for Gonna start at 18 minutes. And then we'll check it with the toothpick at that. However, as this is a live TV-ish internet, I don't know what to call it. Um, obviously, I'm not gonna stand here and try to fill time, uh, you know, 20 minutes worth of time while these bake. So, I really, Everything else you've seen me do, I have done in real time. But for this, this is actually my second batch because I, I did one for the Food Network swap, which is what you're going to see here. So I took a picture of what they look like, looked like, no, Ken, took a picture of what they looked like when they came out of the oven yesterday. So you can see um, that the brown sugar has kind of bubbled up and over on those three there. Uh, they really puffed up. And I, we're thinking the reason for that is because I ended up using um, not enough shortening uh, in the recipe yesterday. But here, is what they looked like. And uh, obviously we ate a couple already. You can see there's a little bit of uh, caramelization on there, but uh, they are pretty good uh, for my first attempt, I would say. They definitely, I'm sorry, the lighting is so bad with this today. Uh, let me try the other camera real quick. See if this looks... Oh yeah, that looks better. So you can see there's... That's probably where the uh, sugar had bubbled up and, and ground out. But it's... They smell great. Uh, thank you, Dina. Glad you think they look great. Let me go ahead and I'll... Uh, Cut into one here real quick, just so you can see the crumb. And um, they came out a little dry. And I think, again, that might have been because of the shortening. But see, that's not bad. The crumb on that looks pretty decent. 
and you did get that nice, uh, I mean, the crumble on top looks good. And honestly, I mean, it tastes really good too. So. Mm. Mm hmm. They're a little dry, but that could be fixed probably by just putting some butter on there if you want. If they do come out dry. I have high hopes for this second batch because I remember to use the right amount of shortening in this one. So I, th I think it's going to be good. But it's coffee cake. Even when it's bad, it's good. And this really isn't that bad, especially for my very first attempt. I'm, I'm pretty happy with how these turned out. It's a nice tight crumb. It's just a little bit too crumbly because there's not enough moisture because it didn't use enough shortening. So yeah. Mm. I'm happy with it. And I think if you make it, you will be happy with it too. And really, at the end of the day, all that matters is that you like what you made and that you will eat what you made. Because to heck with everybody else, you're baking for yourself, right? Um, but yeah, I guess it's just like anything else. It's just, um, just practice. Hodgepodge says, I bet they would be good too if you swirled in the topping inside as well. That's a really good idea. I think I will suggest that to Karina. <laughs> Sean Zell, I said, gimme. Yeah, I bet. It's funny, Sean and I were talking about uh, the other day on uh, why we need teleportation. And I think, uh, yeah, teleportation would be good for instances such as this. So I appreciate all of you joining me again on my culinary adventures. Uh, yeah, this was fun. This was a lot of fun. So yeah, I'm going to keep an eye on these uh, that I just put in there and then I'll, I'll take them out and I will write myself a note to take pictures of this batch <clears throat> so you can see the difference between the first batch and this one. And yeah, I'm excited. This was good. This was tasty. This was fun. I love doing this. Thank you for being here. If you had fun today, if you like the show, you want to support the show, uh, there's a link to my Patreon uh, down below. Uh, I, I love doing this. This is just so much fun. Uh, if you had a good time, do me a favor, share the video on social media wherever you happen to be, whether it's YouTube, Facebook, Periscope, Twitch, wherever. I'd appreciate that. Um, it's fun to talk to you guys while I do this. That's why I do live streams instead of just make videos. Because this, this is good. I like this. So I will let you go. We will be back with another uh, Ken in the Kitchen episode on Friday. My normal kitchen episodes schedule is Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Obviously we had Monday off and then I took Tuesday off yesterday uh, from doing the show. So kitchen today, regular show tomorrow, kitchen episode on Friday. Oh, all right. I've got to put that up on the screen because that was really, really sweet of you to say that. <laughs> Yay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, so yeah, I will see all of you for the regular show tomorrow, 9.30 Pacific time. And I hope you have a great day. I hope you're having a good week. And just remember, whatever you do, be kind to yourself and be kind to each other because we definitely need that uh, right now. Definitely do. So hodgepodge, Dina, Sean, Thank you so much for being here and whoever else might be watching but didn't uh, chime in in the comments. Thank you again. And I'll see you all tomorrow. All right. Take care, everybody.